Imagine being surrounded by mosquitoes that carry a parasite capable of threatening your life. That's the reality for millions of people across the globe, and it's called malaria. Let's take a closer look at what makes this tiny parasite so powerful. Number 1. What is malaria? Malaria is a life-threatening disease caused by plasmodium parasites, which are transmitted to humans through the bites of infected female Anapholis mosquitoes. Number 2. What causes malaria? Malaria is caused by plasmodium parasites, which infect humans through the bites of infected female Anapholis mosquitoes. Five species of plasmodium can cause malaria in humans, with plasmodium falciparum being the most dangerous. Number 3. How is malaria transmitted? Malaria is primarily transmitted through the bite of an infected female Anapholis mosquito, which injects plasmodium parasites into the bloodstream. Malaria can also be transmitted through blood transfusions, sharing contaminated needles, or, in rare cases, from an infected mother to her baby during pregnancy or childbirth. Number 4. What do you know about the life cycle of malaria parasite? The life cycle of the malaria parasite, plasmodium species, involves two hosts, humans and female Anapholis mosquitoes. First, we will explain the human cycle or asexual cycle. So, when an infected mosquito bites a human, it injects sporozoids into the bloodstream, which travel to the liver. There, they invade liver cells, develop into seasons, and release merozoids into the bloodstream. These merozoids invade red blood cells, where they multiply, causing the red blood cells to rupture and release more parasites, leading to malaria symptoms like fever and chills. Some merozoids differentiate into gametocytes, the sexual forms of the parasite. Now we will explain the mosquito cycle or sexual cycle. When another mosquito bites the infected human, it ingests the gametocyte stages formed during human cycle. Now, these gametocytes develop into male and female gametes in the mosquito's gut. The gametes fuse to form a zygote, which becomes a motile eukinate. The eukinate penetrates the mosquito's gut wall, forming an oocyst. The oocyst matures and releases thousands of sporozoids, which migrate to the mosquito's salivary glands, making it infectious and ready to transmit malaria to another human. Number 5. What are the symptoms of malaria? The symptoms of malaria include fever, chills, sweating, headache, muscle aches, fatigue, nausea, and vomiting. Number 6. How is malaria diagnosed? Malaria is diagnosed through a blood test, typically by examining a blood smear under a microscope to identify plasmodium parasites. Rapid diagnostic tests RDTs, can also detect parasite antigens in the blood. In some cases, polymerase chain reaction PCR, testing is used for more precise detection, especially in cases of low parasite levels or mixed infections. Number 7. Who is at risk of malaria? People living in or traveling to malaria endemic regions, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia, and Southeast Asia, are at the highest risk. Vulnerable groups include young children, pregnant women, and individuals with weakened immune systems, as they are more likely to experience severe malaria. Number 8. How can malaria be prevented? Malaria can be prevented by using insecticide-treated mosquito nets, applying insect repellents, and wearing protective clothing. In areas with high malaria risk, taking anti-malarial medications as prescribed can help prevent infection. Additionally, reducing mosquito breeding sites by eliminating stagnant water and using indoor insecticides can also help control mosquito populations. Number 9. Is there a vaccine for malaria? Yes, the RTS, S, brand name, Mosquirix, vaccine has been developed and is being deployed in some African countries. However, it is not 100% effective, so other preventive measures are still necessary. Number 10. What is the treatment for malaria? The treatment for malaria depends on the plasmodium species and the severity of the disease. For uncomplicated malaria, artemisinin-based combination therapies ACTS, are commonly used, especially for plasmodium falciparum infections. Chloroquine is used for plasmodium vivax in regions without resistance, while primakina is given to eliminate dormant liver stages and prevent relapses. Severe cases may require intravenous treatments and hospitalization for close monitoring. Number 11. What are the complications of severe malaria? Severe malaria can lead to life-threatening complications, including cerebral malaria, brain damage, severe anemia, due to red blood cell destruction, organ failure of liver, kidneys, or lungs, hypoglycemia, and respiratory distress. 
If untreated, these complications can result in permanent damage or death. Early diagnosis and treatment are crucial to prevent such outcomes. Number 12. What regions of the world are most affected by malaria? Malaria is most prevalent in Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia, Southeast Asia, Central and South America, and parts of the Middle East and Oceania. Number 13. Why is Plasmodium falciparum the most dangerous species? Plasmodium falciparum is the most dangerous species because it multiplies rapidly in red blood cells, leading to severe anemia, organ damage, and complications like cerebral malaria. Plasmodium falciparum is also more likely to cause complications such as multi-organ failure and death. Additionally, P. falciparum has developed resistance to several anti-malarial drugs, making it harder to treat in some regions. Number 14. Why does malaria relapse in some cases? Malaria relapse occurs in Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium oval infections because the parasites can form dormant liver stages called hypnozoids. These hypnozoids can remain in the liver for months or even years without causing symptoms, but they can reactivate later, releasing new parasites into the bloodstream and causing a relapse of the disease. Number 15. Can I get malaria again after being treated? Yes, being treated for malaria does not provide immunity. You can get malaria again if bitten by an infected mosquito. Number 16. What is drug-resistant malaria? Drug-resistant malaria occurs when plasmodium parasites develop resistance to the medications used to treat the infection, making the drugs less effective. This resistance, particularly to drugs like chloroquine and artemisinin, arises due to genetic mutations in the malaria parasites. Drug-resistant malaria is a significant concern, especially for Plasmodium falciparum, as it complicates treatment and control efforts. Number 17. Can malaria be spread from person to person? No, malaria cannot spread directly between people. It requires a mosquito vector or specific conditions like contaminated needles or blood transfusion. Number 18. How does climate change impact malaria? Climate change can impact malaria by altering the habitats of Anapholis mosquitoes, which are the vectors of the disease. Rising temperatures, increased rainfall, and changes in humidity can expand mosquito breeding areas into regions that were previously too cold or dry. This can increase the spread of malaria to new areas, potentially putting more people at risk. Understanding malaria is the first step towards prevention and cure. Share this knowledge with others, and let's work together to end malaria for good. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more valuable and impactful content. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy. Stay curious.